Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and it's time to update the price of Eternal Masters uh, for two reasons. One, the price has changed significantly, and two, uh, everybody's saying that my math was wrong in the first video, which it wasn't, trust me. But now I redid it and came up with a more up-to-date number with a more up-to-date set of prices. And these are based on the pre-order adjustments uh, made by Card Kingdom. And everybody's like, oh, Card Kingdom, I don't like them. Well, whatever. I use them, and they're pretty accurate on price. Uh, compared to eBay, where I sell, they're typically about... 11 to 20 percent high compared to what i could realistically get and then after that i have to factor in actual ebay costs like the fees the shipping the envelopes all that so to me the set looks pretty grim but to the average person it's still above msrp and people are saying no it's 170 dollars it's 200 dollars well it isn't learn how to do math so let's uh let's go over to this spreadsheet here i mean you can already see what the end result is i was going to cover it but who cares? So this is the mythic section. This is all the mythics, and this is all of their pre-order prices. And some people are saying, oh, Mana Crypt, it isn't worth 109 Whatever. You know, if I change it to $20, the box doesn't go down that far. I mean, actually, 20 bucks. Ouch. Jeez. <laughs> High variance in this one, by the way. So, um, yeah, so that's the mythics. Here's the rares right here. Uh, and you list them twice because you have to do that for the... Um, because you're not calculating the the average of the rares and the mythics, you're calculating the average value of the rare slot. And in the rare slot, which come f comes from the sheet that they print at the graphics facility, there are two of every individual rare for every single mythic. Now, um, that's where I came up with this number. The average rare slot value is $9.58. It's really hard to argue that that alone is not true because those are the prices and that's that. I mean, that is the average of it. So you've almost got your 999 pack MSRP right there. So, I mean, the problem is if you don't pull like a $100 card, you're probably going to lose money. And that's kind of how Modern Masters was. You either pull a Tarmogoyf or you don't. Like if you took uh, Mana Crypt... I made it zero dollars and Caracas, I guess we'll say zero dollars. The force of will zero. You're at two twenty nine a box. You just lost money. So if you don't pull one of those, you're going to lose a slight amount of money. Um, so I don't like variants like that. I was going to run the standard deviation, but that number is practically useless unless you can compare it to the standard deviation of another set. So I didn't even bother to do that. And it's not me doing it. It's the computer because, yeah, it is a tough calculation, but that's why we have technology. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, now, over here in the gray, we've got every single uncommon in the whole set. And as you can see, most of them are 25 cents. Uh, there was a couple that were worth, I thought, like 7 bucks or something. Like, you know, Chain Lightning's in there. That's a pretty good one. There was a couple. Um, but the average common value is actually 53 cents. So, you know, a lot of fifty ones in there driving up the average. So people are saying, oh, just counted as 25 cents. Well, no, it's worth almost double that. Now, can you trade them in? Can you sell them online? Probably not. I mean, if they're dollar fifty, probably not. But uh, if they're above uh, 49 cents, somebody probably wants them. And you might pull a Cabal there. Therapy. You might pull a blood braid elf. So, you know, it's, it's yeah, people are going to be pulling them and you better get rid of it within a week. But still, you know, you can't just disregard the value. So then the average common per pack. So the common slots, you know, you just multiply it by three straight up because you're not comparing it or mixing it with a mixed rarity amount in the slot. So you can just multiply it by three. You cannot do that for the rares, multiply them by two and then compare it to the mythics at one X. Uh, it doesn't work that way. So you got a dollar 59 just from the uncommons. If you want to consider those, uh, which I do. And then you have to consider the foils because, um, in a normal box, you would take the average foil value and then you would divide it by four because only one in four boosters have a foil. Well, in this set, uh, every single pack has a foil, which is fantastic. Uh, so I set the foil value multiplier at 1.4x. Now, some people are saying, oh, it's 1.1x on average. Some people are saying, oh, it's 2x. Like if you pull a, a foil, I don't know, sneak attack, it's worth like 50 bucks instead of 27.99. And you know, that might be true. Um, I really can't find like legitimately consistent foil pre-order prices. I can't find them anywhere. So who knows what they're going to be worth. Um, I know that most of these cards, or not most of them, but a lot of them, did not have foil versions 
ever in the first place. So if vintage and legacy players really like expensive stuff and, you know, nice looking collectible cards that are impressive, they're going to want the foils. You know, they'll take the old school version, ditch it, and then buy the foil version because, you know, now their deck is even more cool. And people like to foil out whole decks, which I still think is not possible because some of the cards are still not printed in foil. But I think that there's going to be a market for that. Um, so that's cool. I, I just don't see, like, a foil Jace or a foil Mana Crypt or a foil, like, Force of Will going down the toilet price-wise. It just isn't going to happen. Uh, so then we've got... So I put, you know, 1.4x, so that'll come up later. Then we've got the average foil slot value itself is $1.21. Um, now let's go over to the math on where I got this, because this is where it's kind of debatable, and it's a little bit of guesswork, but it's still pretty on it. Um, so... First, we have to start with the set quantity. So this is the number of cards in the set, which actually is pretty much meaningless, but I used it for a different calculation. So there's 15 mythics, 53 total rares, 80 total uncommons, and 101 commons. So it's a total of 249 cards. There you go. And these are the percentages. Now, all that means absolutely nothing. I care about how they were printed on the actual sheet that goes into the actual boosters because that will reflect actual probability of pulling them. So um, the mythics are still 15. Uh, and this is, let me just point out, this is how I understand that it happens. This is how I've heard that they print foils. They're not as upfront about it as how they print the rest. Um, so it might not quite be right. Uh, so throw that out there, but it ain't going to throw off the calculations too much. Uh, so there's still 15 mythics per sheet, but then there's 106 foil rares per sheet um, because the mythics are still printed at half. So you have to take that into consideration. So then double the uncommons, double the commons. Uh, and really it would, you know, you could have done the mythics divided by two and then leave all these as is. That probably would have been more accurate, but um, this is literally like if you took every sheet that comes out of the printer, these are the amounts. You'd have 483 cards on it. And like I said, this is the way that I understand it happens from all that Wizards has said and all that everybody else has said about how they're printed. It might not quite be printed this way. They might print Mythics at the same rarity as rares, and they might triple print foil uncommons. Uh, from what I've pulled myself personally, that is not the case. So these are the numbers I'm using. So then you go to the average mythic value of just the mythic. So it is just the 15 mythics, the average of them. And then the average foil mythic would be uh, times 1.4, because that's what I put as the multiplier. Uh, then adjusted for appearance percentage means what is your actual probability of pulling that? So it's a $49.64 times 3.11%, which is the prevalence of foil mythics in the foil slot from the sheet that they cut apart and put in that slot. Uh, then the same goes for rares. Um, $5.99 is the average rare value, and it's not, you know, doubled or anything or weighted differently. It's just literally the average value of a rare. And so then times 1.4 is the foil value. And then adjusted for appearance percentage of, is, of course, multiplied by 2.95. And then uh, the uncommon, same thing. We got uh, the average uncommon is 53 cents, uh, which matches what we see over there. The average foil uncommon is uh, 1.4 times. And that, you don't know. I mean, it might be five times just because, you know, foil uncommons are a lot harder to get in regular commons or uncommons or just whatever. So who knows? Uh, and then adjusted for per yeah, appearance percentage, it drops down to a quarter because believe it or not, uncommon foils are only 33% of the foils that you pull. Um, the commons are 41%. And I, uh, in this entire calculation, you might've noticed I disregarded commons and foil commons. Probably not a good idea. There's probably like a $10 foil common out there somewhere. So this is a hair pessimistic, but I think at the end of the day, it's probably a 25 or 50 cent difference in the box price. Uh, so, you know, I wouldn't go too nuts about it or actually it would probably be $5 or less, I should say on that scale. Um, so then we go back over here and, uh, that's the average foil slot, which is now these are weighted. So it's $1.54, $1.84, 25 cents averaged, which I believe is the correct way to do it. I'm pretty confident in that. And so then, uh, the average value per booster is just $1.21 plus $1.59 plus $9.58. So like I said, disregarding the commons, then you multiply it by 24 and you get one box's value at $297 and four cents. Now, the way I usually do things is um, 
any card worth less than two dollars so a dollar 99 on down i replace its value with zero because even if i got a play set of them uh that would be eight dollars and then minus about 20 percent so ebay price you know it's somewhere around six seven dollars in that neighborhood and then it cost me over two to ship it all things considered uh it's closer to three bucks actually so it's just not worth you know taking a 60 70 percent fee hit on cards like that i i tend to sell them in bulk on buy list or something but it's not like i'm getting 10 cases of eternal masters anyway i'm getting one box so i'm not gonna have a play set of anything which is really gonna hurt my uh per card shipping prices that's for sure um but yeah that's how i came up with the math uh pretty hard to dispute it. it's all right in front of you which is exactly what people requested was me making a video showing my math so um the only thing that you could say is oh my gosh card kingdom's price are double reality like they're so far on another planet that you know on day one on ebay they're going to be worth less or tcg player or something um so yeah you will get a different number if you start with a different set of prices you know obviously um these prices look pretty realistic to me but they really haven't printed anything like this anytime recently so who knows? A lot of variants in it. Uh, I don't think any cards will suddenly shoot up. I don't think people are like inventing new decks, so there's really nowhere to go but down. So overall, kind of a bad investment, but if you open one box, you would be expected to make, if you bought it for MSRP, almost $60 profit, and I think that's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, like I said, the standard deviation is through the roof. It's probably at least 40 which means um, you know, you're, you're either going to hit or miss on it, but you know... That's what it is. You know, with Shadows, there was so many cards that were solid and worth money that the standard deviation was down. So if you open a box, you'd probably get a couple of cards worth, you know, 5 to 20 bucks because there was so many of them. Now, if you open, I don't know, Cons of Tarkir right now, you better pull a fetch land because nothing else is worth anything. So the standard deviation is as high as it could possibly get. It's almost the value of the card itself, which is terrible. And I don't like hit or miss because unless you're buying 100 boxes, you're going to hit or miss. Now, if you do buy 100 boxes, you're going to get... Um, exactly like distributed number of rares and cards and individual unless they made a printing mistake that's just how probability works so anyway if you have anything to add to this wonderful calculation or if you think um you know i missed 50 bucks per box worth of commons and and foil commons or something let me know otherwise uh this today on june 8th is what the price sits at so um don't believe all those people saying oh it's below 200 everybody's gonna lose their butts on it i actually do think people are gonna lose their butts on it uh because prices are gonna crash pretty quickly and it's going to be really hard to sell these but if you pull a foil rare foil mythic i mean you at least got a pretty good pull out of there um so i intend to probably go to the draft this friday and try to draft it even though i'm not familiar with almost any of these cards that's always fun <laughs> and i'll uh, let you know how guys how that goes but uh remember on friday hopefully friday morning um i'll be able to film an opening video of uh pretty much my one box that i'm getting and that's about all i'm getting so watch for that and we'll see how i do compared to the 297 dollar and four cent target and i'll see you guys next video